Hey guys, I'm back for another video and welcome to Hypixel Skyblock for another tutorial. And today I'm going to be showing you guys the seven fastest ways to progress in Hypixel Skyblock. So what do I mean by fastest ways to progress? Well, I decided to choose the grinds where you accomplish the most stuff at the same time. The ultimate multitask. There are certain things in this game that are just big brain to do. You accomplish a dozen things at once, and that's how you get to Skyblock level 366 on an Iron Man after a year and four months. When <laughs> getting to, I would say 75% of that progression on a regular profile took me nearly three times as long. Uh, so yeah, let's get right into it. Oh yeah, and as a quick little thank you for doing all the research, for this video, you should use code 30 virus if you decide to buy anything in the Hypixel store, especially gems. That would be much appreciated. All right. The first grind brings us to the end island in the Zealot Bruiser hideout. This is one of the best places in the game to grind because you could just do so much here. First of all, Zealot Bruisers have an increased chance to drop summoning eyes versus regular Zealots which if you're on an Iron Man profile is great for just getting dragons in general. And if you're on a normal profile, makes a lot of money. So not only can you kill Zella Bruisers, but you can also have a Slayer quest going at the same time. You could do Void Gloom Seraphs in the Bruiser hideout, which is just another thing to add to the list, right? As you're spawning your Slayer, you have an increased chance to get summoning eyes. You get to do the Slayer, progress, get some combat XP, level a pet perhaps. I'm using an Enderman right now. I'm actually smacking things with a Hyperion. I'd suggest if you're not as far in the game as I am, you can use your Katana. I'm actually not even wearing armor right now, which is hilarious. Uh, I, of course, if I really wanted to be annoying about it, I could do this, Hype Mage. But, you know, you don't have to do that. Also, while you're down here doing Slayers, you should pay attention in the chat to notifications of a Golem spawning. Endstone Defenders have a really annoying bestiary. At the moment, it's 400 kills, I believe, or 500. I don't remember. But, yeah, you're going to want to attend every single fight that you can. And killing your Zealot Bruises actually counts towards the progress towards spawning this guy, which means if you place highly in the fight with like werewolf armor, then you actually get a chance for a golem pet or a tier boost core, which would be kind of sick. And on top of that, if you have a bow in your inventory while you're doing your zealot bruisers and enderman slayers down there, you can also pop up here, get a few shots off on any dragons that spawn and then go back down. You also get credit for the bestiary and finally of course while you're down here you're probably gonna want to wear final destination armor like that guy and it will increase the kill count on your armor set and on top of all of that if jerry's mare killing mobs will spawn a jerry or have a chance to spawn a jerry every six minutes and the same goes for the great spook mobs the primal fears so there's a lot you could do all at the same time this is one of the best grinds in the entirety of skyblock all right now we're on to the next grind welcome to the crystal hollows and here is where we do some good old powder mining so powder mining is a concept that's been around ever since the crystal hollows has and it works like this you start breaking some hardstone blocks and then you reveal chests and you open those chests so if you go up here you will see a perk called great explorer it is unlocked at heart of the mountain tier six and once it's maxed out you actually get to just open a chest without unlocking it which is ridiculously overpowered as you can see in my chat right now i'm getting gemstone powder i'm getting mithril powder i'm getting gold essence diamond essence and i'm getting a rare chance to spawn gold or diamond goblins which i could then kill to get even more essence and more importantly credit towards their bestiaries for more skyblock xp on top of that i'm doing this currently in the precursor remnants which gives me a chance to drop robot parts which i could then use for nucleus runs as you can see right there i just got a robotron reflector now, if I were to do this in the goblin hideout, then I would get a chance to get certain goblin eggs, including 
the blue cheese goblin omelets main component the the blue blue egg blue goblin egg very rare very annoying to get although if you're powder mining like this then you have a, you have a decent chance you'd probably get like two or three of them an hour if you are max efficiency also i should probably mention moles perk uh, the mole perk is really useful for this i have it all the way maxed out at level 190 this grind is called powder grinding for a reason it's because you get a ton of powder i mean a few days of this in your heart of the mountain tree is pretty much maxed it's that good or at least it used to be before the essence update now your drops are kind of mixed between essence and powder but it is still very very good now not only can you get eggs from this process if you're on iron man it's one of the only ways to get blue cheese goblin omelet unless you hope for a lucky ping in the iron man sweats discord but otherwise if you want to grind it out yourself this is it but on top of that if you decide you need some sludge again iron man profiles will especially need this you can use instead of a, a drill you can use a jungle pick and then you will get sludge so long as you break hardstone blocks within the jungle biome and you might notice my speed is pretty bad that's because i'm using a snail pet right now which is another thing you're accomplishing while you do this. And that is getting tons and tons of hardstone. So Snail Pet's perk works on hardstone. And it's the only way to get fortune on hardstone. And as you can see, my slow moving perk is not quite maxed out because I haven't spec into speed. But uh, currently, 3 fourths light young dragon armor with rancher's boots. You could also set your power at Maxwell to something that gives speed. I believe Sweet is one of the best ones. You could put all your tuning points into speed. Make sure your fortune's 400 before you do this grind, like for real, like for hours and hours and hours, obviously. And I guess some other benefits of doing this grind, you might get lucky and accidentally find a grotto, a fairy's grotto. And if it's a big one, you can actually go on. Well, I don't know if Iron Man Sweats does it, but there are some discords where you can sell these grottos for some actual coin because people need to get their Jasper. So and they're out there buying lobbies. So you can find one of those, which is great. Oh, and if you're in the jungle as well, you can get oil barrels, which is a nice little item to have. It's more convenient than using biofuel. But yeah, this is again, one of the most goaded grinds in the entirety of Skyblock. It's not even that boring. There's a lot of stuff to find. If you reveal enough gemstones, then I guess you have yourself a little mini route where you can break gemstones. Wouldn't officially recommend that as a money-making method, but you know, if you need some quick flawlesses to unlock a gemstone slot, why not, right? This next grind also could be done in the Crystal Hollows, but not just Crystal Hollows. Uh, frozen blaze fishing. It's the best way to fish in the entirety of the game. And I do find it kind of funny that the best fishing armor in the game is frozen blaze. It's a combat armor set. I actually made a whole dedicated video to this grind. If you want to check it out, it's in the top right hand corner. You click the card, but yeah, frozen blaze fishing is a clever little trick that takes advantage of the loot share system. So I'm going to be showing on screen what's happening instead of doing it in person because you need six people for this. Well, maximum six people. So the way loot share works is let's say you spawn a sea creature or any mob for that matter. And then five other people attack that mob and do more than like 10% of its health as damage. Then all six people, the person that spawned it and the five others that damaged it, all get credit for the kill. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means that the person that originally spawned it or the person that actually killed it, uh, depending on the scenario, will get a chance for the RNG drops that that mob drops. And all five of the other people will get an 80% reduction in the chance to get the drop, but they all do get a chance to get that drop. So let's say I were to spawn a sea creature, all five of the other people were to damage some other mob, then those five people each have a chance to get one of the drops from the loot pool, just five times less common. But when you take that concept and apply it to fishing, everybody is in the same spot, all fishing together, and the Frozen Blaze passive ability, so long as you're moving, will damage every single sea creature that spawns, which means all six people automatically not only get credit for the sea creatures they do kill, but they also get the loot share for all the sea creatures that all the other five players have spawned. That means all of you are getting chances for RNG, all of you are getting bestiary credit, which is the main reason people do this, by the way. You get a good amount of money, actually, 
<laughs> not only in drops if you're on a normal profile but just coins in general if every now and again you don't get a sea creature uh, th the one downside to this strategy is you're gonna struggle to get a hundred percent sea creature chance i would suggest bobbin time three on a full set of frozen blaze i have submerged on this helmet but it gives like 0.9 percent sea creature chance so honestly your best bet is getting a ton of talismans with enrichment set to sea creature chance your beacon set to sea creature chance and if you can do the grind during marina then you have another 15 percent sea creature chance right there during jerry's a plus 10 percent on your stats especially when it's it's imitating marina perks then you have even better sea creature chance and of course fishing speed matters a lot too so get yourself some mushy glowy tonics if you're lucky someone in the party will splash it for all of you if not there is a mix in you can get for your god potion but yeah if you can manage to have a 100 sea creature chance and max fishing speed on five players all six players all with frozen blaze you're gonna be basically progressing five times faster than normal when it comes to fishing progress just don't even bother with thunder magma lord it doesn't matter frozen blaze is where it's at not only for crystal hollows if you wanted to do any type of worm for worm membranes but you can also do it on jerry island to get yetis to get uh you could do it in the crimson isle you could do it with lava sea creatures if you wanted you could do it in the crystal hollows lava fishing if you wanted to get magma pigmen in the blazes for bestiary it is an absolutely goaded grind and on top of all of that you can multitask even more by placing down a totem of corruption <laughs> which will corrupt all your sea creatures and then they will still die because they're pretty weak overall unless they're legendary and even then they still if everyone has frozen blaze they will die then you can also get obfuscated one fish alongside everything else which you could then use to spawn uh you could use as bait to get obfuscated two with trophy fishing it's an amazing grind i've said that three times in a row but genuinely this video contains some of the best knowledge there is to be had in the entirety of skyblock all right here is the next grind welcome back to the crystal hollows we are underneath a mine of devon right now now this is not a perfect lobby i'm going to preface this this is for example purposes only but in your case you want to be here one block below the layer of gold. So what is this grind? It is Mine of Devon, Insta Mining Gold Blocks. So how does this work? Well, there was an update recently that made it so that the gold blocks in the Crystal Hollows, the gold blocks in the Mine of Devon respawn after a few minutes. So now a new meta has emerged. Now this meta has actually been around, but it wasn't really a money-making method per se. It was more so for other reasons we'll get into but gold is now a plentiful resource the problem is it takes a little bit to mine it right one block at a time not very efficient so mine of devon gold grinding involves three fourths mineral armor with a chest plate of devon or any piece really so you go from breaking one block to breaking several which is nice it's better more efficient but there's another step on top of that you might notice i have two drills in my inventory obviously there's my goaded one the x655 with all the all the fixins except for the fortune 4 that i overrode this is a gemstone drill the type of drill really doesn't matter what does matter is right here the blue cheese goblin omelet which grants one level to all unlocked perks in your heart of the mountain tree including mining speed boost so as you can see down here Mining speed boost gives you 300% mining speed for 20 seconds. The upgraded version, as you can see here, is 400% mining speed for 25 seconds. So you can actually get that really good mining speed boost while using your main drill. It just involves a little bit of um, pressing buttons in the right order. Also, I'm using Battle Pet for the record. The way this works is that while you're in the magma fields, if it says heat immune, that means you're good. But I'm standing one block higher and it says precursor remnants, no good. You need to be in the magma fields. Again, ideally, um, as you can see here, right? My Y level 64, that's where you want to be standing, right? This is 63, that's too, uh, it's a little low, but it will work for example purposes. So. The way this works is have your fingers on the buttons for the main drill and the secondary one. For me, it's three and four. So as you can see, I'm on three 
and I go four, right click three. And just like that, I have the insane mining speed boost on my main drill and I can instantly mine gold blocks. This is an incredible grind. It's one of the best money making methods in the game. Granted, you have to not skill issue. You have to be moving around constantly breaking the most blocks possible. And you have to have the blue cheese goblin on it, which is very, very expensive. Alongside, not to mention all fully gemstone, chambered and reconned and everything devon armor not easy to get so the benefits of this grind is with a max setup you're making about 40 million coins an hour during fiesta 20 million an hour off fiesta which is slightly worse than ruby mining but you're accomplishing a lot at the same time so i would say it's worth it because on top of the money you also get this little thing in your skyblock xp menu maxed out extremely quickly mining fiesta or is broken if you attend one fiesta no if you attend two fiestas one mare's worth and only do mine of devon gold i personally managed to max this out in one coal mare term by just doing this just breaking the gold <laughs> it counts as breaking an ore and you're breaking like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them per mining speed boost so you're maxing out that skyblock xp source which is great you're also having an increased chance to spawn golden and diamond goblins even more so than powder grinding i would say they're very very common i almost maxed out my diamond uh goblin bestiary in just two fiestas again it's very efficient for that and there's a certain pet in the game called the golden dragon which has a perk called uh which one is it actually shining scales it grants plus 10 strength and two magic find per digit in your gold collection which means most players are going to want to shoot for an absolute minimum of 10 million gold collection. Mine is over 100 million, which means I get another 10 strength. And I'm actually intending on getting to a billion collection for another 10. Uh, that's going to be a lot of, it's going to be a lot of gold mining. But yeah, you get a, t a lot of extra strength on your golden dragon pet, which by the way, is the best pet in the game for damage and the best pet in the game for magic find both of which you get more of with the a billion gold collection or i'd say at least 100 million if you're taking this game seriously 10 mil if you just want to get by um, minimum is what i would say and then of course you can actually use the gold for stuff if you're on an iron man profile you could spend it on bank upgrades golden teeth whatever you sell to npc by the way that's where all this gold is going very very good grind this one's one of my recent favorites upon getting a hyperion with all three wither scrolls like having wither impact on a necron blade it changes the way this game plays almost entirely and i absolutely love it so one of the best grinds for multitasking in this game is killing magma riders with the hyperion now i'm using a black cat pet right now because it actually gives you like 15 percent more uh collection item drops which in this case is magma chunks or if i'm killing ghasts over there then that's a 15 percent increase in the drop rate for tentacle meat which i can use to make gas cloaks but yeah hype maging around killing all the mobs boom 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 one tapping everything and if there's sulfur break the sulfur obviously this grind is great especially for iron man players now i'm not specced into mage right now i actually probably should do that but just as an example imagine i'm one tapping everything nearly infinite uh mana yeah i'm specced into farming right now so this is kind of bad but imagine me one-shotting everything right stats tuning into intelligence and i actually have a set of brilliant vanquished gear with mana pool mana regen and then i have this uh this implosion belt with mana regen one on it uh, i'm not sure if i'm really gonna bother with the attributes on that to be honest it's very very expensive uh but anyways there we go now i'm specced into mage so now you can actually see what this grind is supposed to look like there it is look at that but anyways yeah killing these magma riders is great 
because you get magma chunks, which you can use to craft magma necklaces. And if you're on an Iron Man profile, that's your only way to get high attribute gear really is to grind out the materials and craft a million of them. I mean, there's a reason I have a mana pool six, mana regen six magma necklace on an Iron Man profile. Same here, veteran six, vitality seven on that one. And I have a 10 starred one and a five starred one, which by the way, 10 starring a magma necklace is nearly a thousand magma chunks. Very stupid and not worth it, by the way. Don't bother. But I already... I sunk costed myself into finishing starring it when I already added some. But anyways, yeah. This grind's great for that reason. You get a bunch of combat XP and you get coins from Scavenger. Like, I get at least like a mil to two mil an hour just for doing this on top of what I'm really here for, which is the magma chunks. But you can also go into... Let's see... You can go to Maddox and start a Spider Slayer uh, here. So I can do this, for example. T4 Tarantula Broodfather. You spawn them pretty much by accident as you're going around doing this and dead. And that's, that's a Spider Slayer done. So if you haven't already gotten to Spider 9, you can do that pretty much by accident. You barely have to pay attention. Like just boop, 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 you're dead. Could it, you could just ignore your bosses, your mini bosses. They'll eventually die. Like, you could just completely ignore it. But yeah, so you're getting your spider slayers done. You're collecting materials for your equipment for good attributes. You're getting scavenger. You're getting a lot of vanquishers, by the way. The common knowledge right now is to actually beat Skyblock. Technically, you need a thousand Infernal Kuja runs because of just the sheer amount of gear that you need to get, right? Look at my nether stars. Getting a thousand infernal kuja keys costs 2000 nether stars and I'm halfway there by accident. I never did flare grinding. I never went out of my way to get vanquishers, but like nearly half of those I got within only a couple of days of doing this. Not even a couple of days. Like if you were to take all my little grinding sessions put together, it's probably like a day. So it's great for getting nether stars and vanquishers. It's great for getting magma chunks. And once it turns night, then you can actually just teleport over here and start killing ghasts midair, which is something I've also been doing. And I got really lucky. I, look at this, dude. I got a mana pool, mana regen, and gas cloak on an Iron Man. That's a flex. But yeah, very, very good grind. Highly recommended. This next one might look a bit boring on the surface, but there's a lot going on here. So welcome to the garden. This is my five plot long uh, crop farm here. This one specifically is for carrot. So if I were to warp garden and then turn my sounds down because it's very loud. Obviously I've swapped my space bar and my left click. I switched my pet to mushroom cow. I have my power set to strength. I have my tuning points set to strength and I'm getting roughly what appears to be, what is that, 1700 farming fortune? I guess 1900 if you count the um, turning in pests bonus, I suppose. And then there's the potion, then there's the Anita's artifact. So if it got everything all together, you could probably get over 2000 fortune on specific crops. But anyways, carrot farming is great. It's probably the best crop to farm in the garden because various reasons, right? So let's say you're trying to max out your visitors, right? Most of them are going to be asking for enchanted golden carrots. Most of them. I'd say at least half actually are asking for carrots. You're going to max out your carrot milestone long before every other crop. So that's one benefit is that if you have the optimal setup, which by the way, three forts mossy fermento recommed with a mossy rancher's boots. I got pest terminator on my set as well. I'm working on that. I have this carrot hoe here we're cultivating 10 and it's got what is the counter on it 250 mil on it right now with bountiful bountiful is good because you get coins alongside crops and the overall value you get is higher with bountiful so it's technically the best to use but yeah carrot farming is great not just for visitors also it's technically the way to level a pet with the least amount of playtime it is not the fastest because you have a cooldown on the Catechus Feeder or the Caducus Feeder, whatever you want to call it. Honestly, underrated item. 
the caducus feeder is great because it basically gives you just a huge chunk of xp all at once and it consumes a carrot candy but it does not put the carrot candy on the pet it doesn't change the lore in any way but yeah so imagine 2.2 million pet xp every single day if you farmed carrots for long enough you can get all of your pets to level 100 legendary fairly quickly well quickly is a relative term with a small amount of playtime hours again that daily limit means technically you have to wait this is how i got my golden dragon to level 200 in a reasonable amount of time within like a month it's because most of that xp i was using the feeder for so you can get enchanted golden carrots craft them into ultimate carrot candies and then use the caducus feeder which is great you can serve more than half i'd say at least half of all visitors just from farming carrots you're leveling up your crop milestone you're leveling up your garden level farming xp you're spawning pests which are also very important obviously speaking of pests i got a few of them uh, here's a moth actually I gotta get my vacuum and then finally of course if you just so happen to be farming carrots during a carrot contest then you can get some medals and some Jacobs tickets and it's just good I would say yeah prioritize carrot I mean all the crops are needed obviously but carrots the one you're gonna be farming the most and it is quite a it, it's quite a lot of accomplishments all at the same time which fits the theme of the video quite well I guess this last one. Oh boy, you ready for 30 virus to start lecturing you on how to play dungeons? <laughs> Here it is. So the last item on this list, the last of the most efficient grinds in Hypixel Skyblock, the most multitasking, accomplishing the most at the same time is Master Mode Catacombs during Derby. Yes. So the catacombs in general is actually quite good for multitasking because you're getting floor completions boss collections if you're doing master mode you get it twice as fast you get two per run you're also getting every essence type in the game except for crimson essence uh from secrets you don't get dragon essence from secrets but you do get it from killing lost adventures so there is that so you're getting pretty much every essence in the game except for one you're getting floor completions. You're getting loot chests, which could contain recoms or any, I don't know, floor six, giant sword, floor seven, necron handle, whatever, whatever. And you would profit massively from any of the RNG drops. You got meter, which you can be building up to guarantee an RNG drop. You can get treasure artifacts. You can get, oh, a, a ton of bestiary, by the way. There's a whole category just for the catacombs. And I believe... Ooh, I don't know if I can say this in full confidence. I know this is the case of Kudra. If anybody kills the mob, everybody gets credit. I know that's how it works with essence in dungeons. I'm just, I'm not sure about the bestiary. Don't quote me on that. But you are going to be getting a ton of kills. Like, th there's so much Skyblock XP. Like, imagine this, right? My angry archaeologist right now is at bestiary level 19, almost 20. That's 19 Skyblock XP this one is bat and that's at 13 that's 13 skyblock xp so the level of the beast here is the amount of xp that you get so like just from seller spiders 13 xp 22 xp or 21 xp 22 xp 20 xp 22 xp like there's so many skyblock levels just sitting there waiting it's ridiculous and then obviously on top of all of that if you were to do your dungeon runs during derpy then you're going to be getting double the catacombs xp as well and i've seen certain sweats start from nothing looking at you 15 h starts at nothing and then gets all the way to cata 50 in one derpy five days in five days going from nothing to cata 50 just because they were doing their runs during derpy and didn't skill issue am i capable of doing that probably not if you can survive a floor and you can run it during derpy you're getting double cata xp and that logic extends to master mode you get all the benefits of master mode plus the double xp and again doing a derpy m7 grants over a million catacombs experience in one run one run 
That means in 12 runs, you can go from cat 39 to 40, which by the way, you would never do because M7s are way too difficult to be entering a cat 39. That is just a theoretical example. But yeah. Well, anyways, guys, thank you for watching the video. Hopefully you learned something today. If you do all of these, then you'll probably progress at least twice as fast as your average player. No, let's be honest. It's like five times faster than your average player. Maybe twice as fast as your typical sweat that just doesn't stay informed on the meta. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed. Use code 30 virus if you are going to purchase anything in the Hypixel store, even the skins. Um, it helps me out a lot, more than you know. But anyways, I guess that's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys later. Bye.